Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lisa and you're watching Crowing on Vancouver Island. If you're new here, this little man is my co-host, Mr. Zipperman. He is my garden supervisor and he loves to make sure that I'm doing a good job on all of my garden projects. He doesn't like me filming introductions without giving him a little piece of the action. For today's video, we're going to be giving some of my severely neglected houseplants some tender loving care. We have three houseplants we're going to be working with today and let me show you what they look like and hopefully we can breathe some new life into these little plants. So here are the three plants that I'm going to be trying to give some new life to. First, we have this cactus, and I'm not entirely sure what happened to this cactus. This cactus was growing, or cacti, was growing on my fireplace all year, and then towards mid-spring, I started to notice it leaning over, and I decided to bring it outside with the rest of my cacti collection, and I ended up putting it in a fairy garden, which is no longer here. And I propped it up with some sticks, hoping that it would start to become less of a leaning machine, but unfortunately it's only leaned over more. So I'm a little torn as to what I'm going to do with it, but I'm actually thinking I might cut it up and try to create new cacti with this little leaning tower of cactus material. So I think that's maybe what we're going to do because it's not really the most attractive specimen in its current condition. And here we have a snake plant that is very, very neglected. This snake plant lives in one of our bathroom windows and I don't really water it often. Like I'll remember to water it every few months and you can pretty much tell if the leaves look like they're dehydrated, which is kind of sad. There's a little bit of dust. I did dust them off, but let me tell you, it was very dusty prior to me dusting them off. And although this plant is surviving, I wouldn't say it's thriving. And beside it, we have a Boston fern. Now this fern, I was actually doing really well with. I've had it for two, possibly three years now. And it has been repotted at least once, possibly twice I repotted it. And it was doing really well until this past winter. I pretty much neglected most of my plants and this is what happened. Given that it was severely neglected, it doesn't look too bad. I used to be really good at pruning all the, the brown off and just keeping it well maintained, but I literally have not done anything with this plant other than occasionally watering it and probably underwatering it for a prolonged period of time. So it definitely needs a little tender loving care to bring it back to its lush state of health. So hopefully we can do something good for this plant and get it looking even more beautiful than it ever has. So let's do some repotting. So the first project I'm going to tackle is this cactus. We are going to cut it up into pieces and put it into a couple separate pots and hopefully give it some new roots and new life by rerooting it. And hopefully when it grows the second time around, we're not going to have this leaning situation that we currently have. So I'm actually gonna reuse some of this soil. It is cactus palm and succulent mix mixed with a bunch of gravels and sands from a fairy garden which will be totally fine for a cacti to live in. So we're just going to repurpose some of the soil from here into a container. So we've got our container nice and full of soil. Now we're going to go for the cactus and see what we can do with this plant. I probably should be wearing different gloves right now because I'm probably going to get it. I'm going to try not to. So this cacti actually has a pretty impressive root system on it. I'm quite surprised 
When I put it into the fairy garden, the root system was nothing like the way it is now. So even though it's leaning over, I actually think it might be healthier than I thought it was. So I am going to cut it, but hopefully my cuts actually help it to turn into a better plant and I can retain part of the original plant too. So let's see how this goes. I've got a pair of clippers here. And I'm gonna start with just cutting probably about here and taking off this portion here and seeing what difference that makes for our little cacti here. Trying not to touch it too much. So we've got our first piece. And I am going to plant it into this hole here. And something I learned early on with cacti is that if you break off a piece or cut off a piece of cactus, when you put it into soil, you're actually not supposed to water it because I guess cacti don't like water and it'll rot and you can just put it in the soil and leave it there for a month or two and it will root in. I have done this before with a new cacti bot, a new cacti that I purchased and that had a little accident on the way home and it worked really well. So we're going to do the same thing. Just put it into the soil and I will not be watering this cacti for a good amount of time. So there we have it. There's our first cacti. And there's a couple succulents growing in here, which I think I might add to my cacti. I think this actually might be an outdoor succulent, but I can't remember because I did have an indoor one too. But regardless, I'm gonna put it in here and just see how it does as a indoor succulent. And there's another one here. This actually might have been the indoor one, but we're gonna put it into the cacti pot. It's not doing super well, but hopefully it does a little bit better. These guys I'm actually gonna bring back into my house where I think the temperature is a bit, a bit more well controlled than being outside. So they're gonna go back on my fireplace where the cactus live for most of the year and hopefully they have a good environment and they can get growing again this part of the cactus and see what we could do with it. So we've got our pot fill full of soil and now we're going to replant this guy into a new pot of soil. Into the pot of soil that we just filled up and I'm probably gonna have to take some out because I may have overfilled it a little bit. <laughs> gonna pull. I think that seems like a good spot in the pot. So here is our second cacti. I'm still on the fence about whether I should cut this piece or just leave it. I have a feeling it's going to lean again, but I think for now I'm going to leave it and just give it like a month or two to start growing and see what direction it's going to go. The next plant we're going to tackle is my Boston fern. So we're going to take this out and just see what it's doing underneath its cover pot. So this is what it looks like right now. We've got, I think these are the roots growing all the way from the bottom back into the pot, which is rather unusual. So it's got some 
interesting root. Now we've got more going on on this side of the pot, some root things going on. So I do think it is time to give this plant a new home in a new pot. And I was thinking this pot might work, but I'm not sure if it's big enough. It is a little bit bigger, so maybe I'll try it, but I might have to upgrade to a bigger size. But I do have another pot if we need to. So for this Boston Fern, I'm going to be using just a basic potting soil, and then I'm going to mix it with a few amendments. So we're going to start with just basic potting mix. <laughs> Pour some of that into the pot. And then we're going to have a little fun with some amendments. The first thing I'm going to amend my soil with is called kelp meal. It is actually made for outdoor plants. But I like to do a lot of plant experiments and I'm just going to try giving it to this Boston fern and see how it appreciates it. I have never tried this with indoor plants before, but all of my outdoor plants really love this kelp meal. So I'm hopeful that the indoor plants will love it just as much. This is what kelp meal looks like if you've never seen it. It's a product made from kelp or another word for kelp would be seaweed. I don't know if this is made on the, in the Pacific Northwest, but we do have a lot of products similar to this made in the Pacific Northwest. But I guess you can get kelp and seaweed around the world, so it could be made anywhere. I didn't actually look into where it was manufactured. So I put a pretty generous amount into my pot and I'm just going to mix it in. And next I'm going to add some organic charcoal, which is horticultural charcoal. And we're just going to add a bunch of that into the pot. And if you've never seen what horticultural char charcoal looks like, this is what it looks like. Pretty much just the same as like a barbecue charcoal. So now we're just gonna mix it all up. And now the fun really begins. We're going to remove the Boston fern from its container and see what's going on underneath. So here's our trusty Boston fern. I have a feeling I'm going to need some clippers for this project, but we will find out. I think I'm going to start with breaking up these roots. Mm, I think that's going to be the best course of action because I don't know how it's going to, well, I don't know how this is going to go. Now that I look at it, there's like another plant coming out of the bottom of the roots. Now I'm wondering if I should try to save that and create another Boston fern with it. Maybe I will just like break it off. There we go. And we'll see. I may put this into another pot or the same pot. So here we go. How easy is this going to be? Well, it's actually not as bad as I thought. It doesn't look too bad. So we're going to just go around and take out some of this dead material from the plant and try to give it some, oh my, I am going to be so covered in dirt when this video is finished. There is dirt everywhere. Oh boy. 
I'm wondering if I'm creating multiple plants here now <laughs> with the way this is going. Well, it's not perfect. Maybe I'll use some clippers. not perfect but that's okay I think we're gonna leave it the way it is and just upsize it into its bigger pot and I probably will create a second pot or two with all of my rooted bits that I have pulled apart it's gonna make a little well in the pot with the dirt Once again, I have put too much dirt in here. So we will take a little bit out. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're just gonna plop that in to the pot, rough it up a little bit. And put the soil back in. So I think that's pretty good for this plant and that's going to be all for today. I am going to make another pot of my Boston fern but I don't need to show you that. So thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next video. Have a nice day!